Hello, Zero K fans. This is Shadow Fury 33 with another exhibition match. This time, Felthos versus Flipstep on Hide and Seek. So, before the match, let's go over the map slightly. This map we've seen a few times before. It can lead some very, very intense matches. I mean, both players starting in the center, but then the massive area around them. That that means there's a lot of opportunity to rebuild, to defend, to attack. Actually, there's a lot of routes to attack. But the most valuable mexes are in the back. I mean, there's Mexes in the all the corners actually. They're all 2.4, 2.7. There's also 2.4 around here behind the main base, another 2.7 as well. 2.4 is just scattered around. For the most part, though, 1.3, which is serviceable, but given the amount of 2.4s, you want to go for those first, and we already see that Felthos knows this going for one of the 2.4s. Well, Flipstep surprisingly going right in the center of the three 1.3s. Interesting start, though I often see players will start out by that 2.4, because that's really the most economic, that's the most valuable. It's almost worth two of these, but it's the same metal extractor to build it. So that's that's one of the big things. This map usually starts out with, with people trying to go across the choke points. Sometimes people will go spiders to try to go over the hills, but not often. So they'll try to go around the choke points and then at the same time expand backwards. And then you start to see roving gangs of raiders going around the sides, just to try to deal with those back expansions. And then after that, it starts to explode across the entire map. And it's kind of a cool development, too, the way it develops, but it can take a little while. This match, I don't think, is going to be particularly long, but we'll see. Uh, so let us begin. Belt up going for the Cloakie Bot Factory, and building up Metal Extractor as well. Going for v Rector. They don't need to bother with anything else. And Flipstep also going for Cloakie Bot Factory. No jump bots, no spiders. This is surprisingly normal. I mean, normal for everything other than hide and seek. Hide and seek, you often see jumpers and spiders, but not today. Today we're seeing Cloakie versus Cloakie. And Flipstep just getting themselves set up. They're being fairly aggressive, getting up, looks like about three glaives. Which I've been told is a really bad number of glaives. While well, Feltoss is getting the one glaive for scouting, but I've told I've been told three glaives is exactly the right amount to do nothing. I don't know if that necessarily holds true in every situation, but that's the advice I've been giving. However, Flipstep, wisely, only sending two. Keeping one at home, sending two forward. But yeah, apparently it's just enough to have them die without necessarily killing as much as their value is worth compared to one or five, or potentially two. Flipstep, however, having sent two is rather immune to that criticism because they're not sending three. They're keeping one at home for defense. Actually, they're keeping one at home for a flank from the looks of it. But that... That glaive able to get in? I mean, the thing with the Defender, it can deal with one glaive, it can't deal with two. Because it kills one in two shots, but it only has three without reloading. But thanks to that commander, this glaive can't really do much. The commander pulling up in time to defend things. While well, at the same time, around the back, we have a glaive ready to harass this metal extractor when it's done. And now it's done, and it's being harassed. That metal extractor, the 2.4, going down. Flipstep, however, does have a secure economy independent of that one metal extractor, so at least that's something. And Flipstep otherwise is... Now I have to rebuild. We'll check. Yeah, music's on. Sorry, I was asked if music was on, and I suppose the music is a little bit quieter than usual. I just don't want it to be overbearing, that's all. Uh, drop it a little bit. There we go. Anyway, Flipstep can rebuild this, but now the Glaive can't harass. The Flipstep moving their commander up the top. And that means that Glaive has no chance. And the commander with a nice light particle beam, too. So both players basically stabilizing. Felthos a little bit more secure. In fact, Felthos much more secure, having just now taken, or just about to take the plus 217. They have that secure. Those Glaives will not be messed with. Flipstep, I think, might have enough Glaives. Yeah, they have, like, three Glaives. So they could mess with it if they so chose. Wouldn't really do much, though. They might kill the Glaives. They wouldn't kill the Metal Extractor before the Lotus killed them. But it looks like Flipstep not aware of this. I mean, they aren't going to be. Flipstep isn't aware of this. They're going to be going in to see what they can take. And if they go around the side, actually, if they play this right, they could stop this Conjurer completely. And they could get rid of this Defender, then go around the back, deal with this Metal Extractor, possibly deal with the Factory too. It really depends on the timing, because right now, Felthos, they are moving their Glaives sort of out. I mean, at the time it would take, they would... Flipstep would be able to kill the Defender and maybe the Metal Extractor before the Glaives came back to deal with the small amount of, of invasion force. But Flipstep is getting a slightly larger invasion force. Increasingly larger, in fact. Felthos has actually stalled a bit. 
Are they on wait? No, they are just stalling. It looks like that's just... They have some high priority thing going on. What is going on? The commander... Oh, the commander's a high priority and has been upgraded with nano lathe. Ah, that's why. So they had 17 metal, 17 build power. Yeah, that, that explains it. No build power left for anything else. Not able to get far with the glaive, but still, that's scouting. That's good. Flipstep knows it's over there now. They have some idea of what's going on. So Failthos at this point will be... Well, more vulnerable. Flipstep knows their commander is. They know that the commander, therefore, is not in the main base. They don't know that the main base is relatively well defended, as far as three glaives are concerned. But they do know that the commander is not there. They also don't know about these glaives coming in, which are going to destroy their glaives pretty shortly. As that happens right now. Although, thanks to the hill, actually, no. Felthos losing all three glaives at the cost of... Well, two glaives at the cost of none. Still, that's a good kill. Actually, those glaives there, wow, they well got rid of the defender. Can't do it on their own, though. Need some support. And going over to the northeast, but this is not going to work out. Unless Flipstep's micro is perfect. If Flipstep micros this absolutely perfectly, and Feltos doesn't build a Lotus in time, which is unlikely, they're going to be building a Lotus as soon as they see that glaive coming in. In fact, I'm curious, do they have radar? They do! The glaive just about to hit it. How will Feltos react to this? Feltos is not reacting to this. Interesting, they aren't paying as much attention to the back as I expected. They are, however, moving the glaive in, so they're not building defenses. They are building a glaive, and the glaive is not being microed at all. Not even able to get rid of the metal extractor. That is unfortunate for Flipstip. They must not have been paying attention right at that one point. And, on the other hand, that was not a bad pull. Felthos reacting in time to pull away, make sure they don't lose their glaives foolishly, but that was still a good setup for a pull. Flipstip, I'd say, yeah, they're... Well, they're at a present advantage, economic disadvantage, military advantage, which means they need to be quick about this. Or they need to expand. One of the two. And they have plenty of room to expand. They haven't even taken... This is 10 metal right here. They haven't taken this yet. While Failthos has. So the economic advantage is in large part due to that. Flipstip? Well, making good use of that hill. Failthos? Making good use of the flanks. It's like, well, I can't get up this hill? Fine, I'll go round the hill. And Flipstip? I don't know if they really care right now. They are much more focused on the southeast, which is not working out for them. Failthos also focused on the southeast. Very paranoid about that area. This is not quite like with Red Comet. This area you do see defended from time to time fairly often, usually after these three metal extractors are taken. Not just for the 2.4, though, mentioned, as mentioned before, the 2.4s are definitely the ones that are more important. But yeah, that's a little spro- The- Heck? Okay. That's unexpected. Sorry about that, I didn't realize that you could see the metal spots through terrain. Not sure if that's a bug or not. I'm actually thinking you might want to be able to see the metal spots through units, because I can't I can barely tell what the value of this metal spot is past the solar collector. Worth considering. Honestly, like I said before, I think these should actually be screen space. Or I'm I'm thinking they might need to be screen space rather than being on the ground. Just because there's this optimal range where you can see them, and otherwise you're either too close and they're blurry or you're too far away and they're unreadable. But that's a, that's beside the point. Flipstep looks like they're not really trying to deal with this Defender Nest. They're trying to go around it once again. They don't have the units to deal with the Defender Nest. If they are trying to deal with it, I don't know what they're thinking. They know what's there. They know there's a bunch of stuff there. They can see it on radar. They know that the Defenders are there. They can't deal with it. Surprisingly, no one's going around the back. No Raiders around... Oh, pff, I forgot to say that. Never mind. Failthos taking advantage of this, but not Flipstep. However, Failthos taking advantage of this for very little reason. Flipstep has actually not built up around the sides, which is a bit of a problem. What are they talking? Oh, yeah, the Defender Nest. Yeah, Failthos is still doing that Defender Nest. They still like that. I'm really not sure why in this case. I mean, the 2.4 is important, but not that important. The main base is now more vulnerable as a result. I mean, if it weren't for the fact that that defend that not defender, that warrior was there, all these glaives would have been pretty well off. However, because of the warrior, those glaives are just well, they're fine. Sorry, if it weren't for the warrior, those glaives would be dead. That's what I meant to say. Failthos would have lost all of their glaives. Flipstep would have been fine, but Flipstep at this point, I mean, they are. I don't think they're doing great. They're kind of falling behind. So Feldos, despite doing this defender nest, is still ahead. And they have a really well defended metal spot. 
And I mentioned in the Red Comet game, the reason that I see them doing this is because they know their opponent's going to be going to the sides. Yeah, then everyone's hard to counter it, that's true. But the thing is, it still means you can't go off to the sides, so you have to kind of go to the main base. Then you aren't sure, do I go to the main base, do I go to the sides, and then you gotta scout it out, and then people will have to learn to scout in order to figure out which way to go to counter it. Because, as it stands, that's the juicy target. That's the point people want to go for, is the expansion, the side expansion. So, again, yeah, and also, Drone pointing out in the chat, with Cloaky, that's actually a pretty effective strategy. Hammers work okay, Zeus don't really work that well. You pretty much need to go for a switch. Switch to, well, in this case you're seeing a fusion reactor, not an air switch. Air switch would be a bad idea, <laughs> naturally, a lot of defenders. The only one I can think of that would work would either be, in this case, shield switch might work. Maybe. I don't know, that seems unlikely. For tanky, I mean, the thugs would work okay for tanky. But at this point, it doesn't really matter. The better strategy, as Flipstip has taken advantage of, is just go around. Forget them, go around. I am surprised, though, that Flipstip has not built up these metal extractors. Do they not know that these are this is 10 metal within these four extractors? Like 2.4, 2.7? I don't know if they know that. I mean, given they started out at the 1.3s, I don't think they have the economy view on. I don't think they're aware that this map has wildly varying metal extractor values. They might be aware of this, but I don't think so. The way they're playing doesn't suggest this. They're skipping the 2.4. I mean, they did build it at 1... Did they build it at 1 point? Maybe. They're focusing on the 1.3s. They're not building the 2.4s. Or at least they're not focusing on them. And we do see a gunship switch, but it's a proxy gunship going around the defenders. Looks like a few rapiers going to go right back to the main base. And Failthos at the same time. Yeah, we are seeing Flipstips going for the rapiers. Failthos has not chosen their build queue yet. And Flipstip... Wow, that's not a bad mix. And we're trying to take that area out, but not able to really go through. And Felthos actually looks like they were able to take out the hammers, go in with the glaives, tear that apart. While over to the north, we see Felthos, they have been harassing around the sides. This is what you do on this map. Felthos knows this map. They know they can get away with... Well, actually, this was... How'd they get up here? Wait, is this bot passable? Oh, so it is. Okay, I thought it was bot impassable. Anyway, Felthos knows they can get away with this. They know that they can get away with this, especially when they've built up a bunch of defenses around that. And they know that they want to be harassing around the sides all the time. That's how you play this map, and they are... they are killing it. Literally, they're killing everything that Failthoss has. Sorry, yeah. Sorry, failing, they're killing everything that Flipstep has. Failthoss is killing everything that Flipstep has. This is being very effective right now. Really, Flipstep plays a lot in this map because I I just find it really odd they haven't gone for the 2.4s with more gusto. Like, the really valuable mexes, those are huge. Like, as in, that would solve the economic disparity if they took these four mexes in the back, assuming they were actually able to do so. But if they took those four mexes in the back, they had the 10 metal from that, and they were able to defend it, the important part there. They have to be able to defend it. If they could do that, that would solve the economic disparity at a stroke, or very nearly. It would have earlier, now it's a little bit too late. Really, Felthos has got a lot of metal right now. I mean, Flipstep is going for the southeast, which is good, but they aren't going for pretty much anything else. They aren't defending the corners, they aren't... They're going for the 1.3s rather than the corner here, which I find surprising. And as we see, Flipstep is getting hit! Rapier Factory, or the Gunship Factory, getting attacked by the Felthos. I can pretty much call it the Rapier Factory now. It's like the Pyro Factory. Jump bots have been developed beyond that, but at this point, the Gunship Factory is pretty much the Rapier Factory. It was the Brawler Factory, now it's the Rapier Factory. It occasionally sees use for Blast Wings or for... I guess Black Dawns? Maybe? Not really anymore. So yeah, Rapiers. And that Scythe getting slowed down, is that going to be enough? I don't know, it might be. It's one more shot! Yes, it's just enough as the Scythe dies, but the Gunship Factory goes down and fails us. Well... Of all of those rapiers, one of them is Failthoss's. I say one of them is Flipstips. I keep getting confused about who they are. One of them is Flipstips, the rest are Failthoss. And zero of them are now Flipstips. Yeah, this is probably going to be game. Well, it looks like Flipstip is going to have to try to desperately push back. Yeah, and Drone pointing out, not enough rebuilding. Not enough building in the first place. I mean, rebuilding, I totally agree, but I just think that 
there wasn't enough building of mechs to begin with. I think Flipstep was playing way too conservatively. We could see from the start of the game that they were actually... Well, they are building a bit more aggressive with the three glaives early on, but they weren't... It didn't seem that aggressive. It's just the one point. Why did they... I can sort of see the forward start. It just seemed weird that they started there, and it seems weird... If it weren't for the fact that they haven't built up this 2.7214, if they weren't focusing... If they were focusing on the really valuable mechs, then I'd think that they only went here to be forward. So it'd be easier to be defensive, because there's a thing in this game... One of the reasons I actually make reference to Go a lot is because both of them have a way you can play where you can kind of be aggressive, you can push forward and then build backwards, or build up territory backwards. And there's a limit where you push too far forward and you overextend, but knowing where that limit is is really important. In 0k you do the same thing, if you push your start location forward, you can actually build behind it, you have all this territory that you have some soft control over, and then you just have to build it up later. So this is a... This is essentially the 0k equivalent of a 4-4 start and go. Quite forward, but, you know, it's not terribly unsafe. The problem is that... Okay, I'm saying that because there's a huge amount of space behind it. Although in this map, yeah, there, that is the case. Whereas, Felthos started more like a 2-3 start. Considerably more defensive, and it actually worked out. They were building fairly defensive the entire game, and now they've flipped over into offense. They've had the advantage the entire game. They haven't really lost anything, except a few glaives early on. Flipstep's micro was great early on at those hills. That was wonderful. But that was it. There wasn't a whole lot of expansion, There wasn't, and this map is very economical. It doesn't look at it at first, because look in the center section of the map, and it feels like, oh, it's hardly any money. And you look in the outside of the map, and once again, like Go, the outside is much bigger than it looks. The inside is much smaller than it looks. Hey, it's not a square, certainly. Oh, wow, that fusion reactor just went down. Didn't even notice that, but at that point, it doesn't matter, Flipstep was dead. So Felthos takes that, well done to Felthos, and... I almost might as well do another one, because hey, there's people watching. So let's find another one. I can't guarantee it's going to be as good as these last three, because those last three were handpicked. But we might find one. Anyway, if I do, then I will be back with that. If not, then I guess I won't be back with that. I mean, that's kind of how it goes. So, I do want to find one before. I don't I don't like leaving it on a cliffhanger. Hmm. Seven minutes. 22 Ooh, no, that's bad. Okay, well, anyway, I guess I'm going to have to leave it on a cliffhanger. So, when I get back, hopefully I'll have another game. Actually, we'll have another game. I will have another game. Stay tuned for whatever that game is. Surprise game!